I do not paint for myself, but still, I have a want deep in me to express certain things, things that have heaped up inside me. This motivates me to paint most of all. There are many people who paint because they have become artists by accident and they dare not do anything else. I do not paint for the painting, but only when I have something to say. And sometimes people ask me, how come you haven't painted a single canvas this year? Well, it may be that this year I've been busy or nothing new happened in my life. I've had periods when I've painted 24 hours a day and I've no idea why. That's the way with all of us. We've got ups and downs. Man is not a machine. Today he's happy, and on the next day he's the most wretched human on earth. That's the way in art, you know. I paint not because I must paint. I paint because I have the need to paint. There are individuals enjoying great generosity from nature. It selects the talents to endow man with and creates magnificent combinations with his capabilities. Once a powerful spiritual impulse merges with spontaneous artistry and the diversity of talent knits to a touch of common sense, the result is a remarkable creative personality. The works of artist Riv Bulgari suggest clearly that hardly anything in the world is stronger than the inner emotional intensity. This emotionality, not unlike a dormant volcano, smoulders somewhere deep into human nature to suddenly erupt again and sweep our expectations to a full extent. I think that the frame does not make the picture. But if they like it this way, this is more or less a matter of design. As to the title, I don't know, but I can name the plot. It's all too obvious. Can't you see it? Here, this is birth, life and death. The cycle of life. This is one of the few surviving canvases from that period. The period until 1993, when I was in Germany. This particular work was painted in Berlin, when the Berlin Wall fell in 1989. It goes without saying, there should be an image, anything depicted to get a title. As to titles, I often meet with friends at home to think of titles. We have a name for such an occasion, titling session, giving the painting its name. There are other ways to give your work a title when the idea is not clear enough. You take a dictionary and open a random page. Then you pick a word that is vague enough, could be Latin, and give your canvas a title. This work has two titles. The first title is Gelagetza, a Mexican village that hosts an annual festival of seven villages high in the mountain, and there is another title, and it has to do with what people do, like in Bulgaria too, after the festival gathering to eat and drink. So the alternative title is To Kill a Dream. It is about the colors of the feast. All this is not depicted directly, but, at least for me, this is exactly the sensation that comes across. This canvas has undergone development on several occasions. There were other things underneath, but many things melted away, and only this purely black background remained. In fact, this canvas has an unusual history. 
It was painted in Mexico. I later ran a gallery in Brooklyn, and I had a moment in my life when I was dissatisfied with a few works, and this one was among them. So this was one of the paintings that got torn down. Later I decided that I could keep it, and so I took some shoe thread, changed the background, and the result was interesting. So this work has got an interesting history. If I paint a picture and it is absolutely clear to me from start to finish what the image should be, then it can be painted in a matter of hours or of several days. This particular canvas I have painted and I have returned to it later. It has undergone many more metamorphoses than other works of mine. This is one of my latest works. It was no special occasion. I just sat down to work on an idea that has been haunting me for a couple of years. It is how to use a two-dimensional plane to create a three-dimensional image that is still perceived as two-dimensional. This is rather difficult to grasp. The canvas is entitled 3-in-1. Why is it called 3-in-1? It's simple. If you take a longer look, you realize that in graphic terms there is a single image on the surface. A longer look at this image, however, reveals a second image inside the first one. Then comes number three, and it is the background. So, these three things in one make the painting. The expression contained in the upper part is also present in the lower part, so there is tautology. In the meantime, the work has three layers that are actually two-dimensional. Anytime I paint, I know what I want to achieve. That is why, to put it simply, the lines and contours are precise, because I know exactly what I want to achieve. If this contour had to be spaced slightly to the left or to the right, then it is not precise. What I wanted to show is exactly what I painted. An artist always tries hard to do more things, so I have always wanted to go to deeper meaning, but so far, this is all I have achieved in this painting. Radoslav Ivanov, Riff Bulgari, grew up in Sofia, Bulgaria. In 1985 he graduated the National School of Fine Arts and in 1992 the National Academy of Art. The life and work of Riff Bulgari define him as a citizen of the world. His friendships with personalities who belong to the vanguard of present-day world culture have enabled him to rediscover his own fulfillment. Unsurprisingly, his contacts go across a wide range of fields – music, filmmaking, literature and other arts. His creative quests focus not only on painting, but also on sculpture.
If I'm not jovial, then at least I have to be with some sort of psychological aberration. It's one of the two. Being a cheerful person does not mean that everything is rosy in your life. In principle, I've never set as an objective to paint in such colors, but generally speaking, the trivial round is dreary and we often say it is grey. When something is exciting for you and different, it should be colourful, vivid. This assumption, however, has not made me paint in vivid colours, but looking back in time, I've had periods of hardship when I tried to achieve things and I could not, like for instance this painting from 1990, and so the colour corresponds to the situation. It seems that an artist at work, wittingly or unwittingly, leaves his perceptions and emotions on the canvas. When man beholds many things and then starts work, he asks himself how to do something he wants to do. I can do it this way or that way, and so on. But at the end of the day, it is very difficult to discover yourself when you know a lot of things. No matter how far away I have moved from Bulgaria and from the Bulgarian mentality, I remain Bulgarian and I have the Bulgarian in me, though it might be very colourful and may even look different, untypical. This painting is entitled Saint Martin, a Caribbean island I sometimes visit. This is like somebody lying on the Saint Martin beach. This is how I see it. Others will hardly see exactly this. They are more likely to detect a still life resembling a human body, but anyway, my concern has been to create a sense of novelty. Absolutely. I can feel that my dad has influenced me because he put the brush into my hand when I was one and I grew up to become an artist. Or maybe I would not have become an artist, but I still would be in some sphere of art. If not artist or sculptor, I might have become an architect. My daughter will be five in May. She likes most of my paintings, but I'd say she's more talented than me and my father. She gets ambitious and tells me, Dad, this is just lovely, but I can show you, I can do better. She combines a dry pastel with felt tip pen and modeling clay in one painting. All this is arranged on one plane, on one sheet of paper. Of course, nobody urged her to do so. What she does is very interesting, and I guess she is genetically burdened. The selection of means of expression and techniques is genuine, and Riff Bulgari goes into experimenting. The lessons of cubists have been learned, the form is restructured and recomposed by adding possible points of view and close-ups. During his early period, he worked in the area of figural composition. His images have monumental quality. The generalized and synthesized form stands out clearly. This shows in preparatory sketches as well, the chunks of arranged reality, the series of violins and still lifes fit into the trend of hyper and photorealism. 
The next step was in the direction of stronger deformation, refraction and building up of realities, and the emergence of a new state of unreality. The means of expression already served to bring up the suggestion of a certain idea. Abstract shapes and their structural and color making are among the favored means of expression. In the late 1990s, experiments with favored styles lost their explosive energy to attain more intellectual power instead. At that stage, the artist would experiment with his entire creative personality, with the visuals, with artistic gestures, with the concept-driven postmodern artistic reality. The ubiquitous photographic precision of his works from the last decade has produced images as if captured by a photo camera with an added satirical or ironical filter. His latest experiments focus on means and subjects lived through and add to the inkling of make-believe. This imaginative play, that at first in the studio of his father, Rif Bulgari perceived as mastering the form, has now re-emerged as a play of the form with the meaning. In 2009, an exhibition of Riv Bulgari and his father, Ivan Ivanov, was displayed in the lobby of the prestigious Bulgaria Concert Hall in Sofia. The interest in the display was great, as the event brought together admirers of both artists. Riff Bulgari has joined more than 150 exhibitions and has mounted 20 one-artist displays across the world. He has appeared on many world-acclaimed talk shows and in documentary films. He has been winning prizes since his childhood to the present day. In 1974, he won the first prize in the National Children's Exhibition. He is also holder of the first prize of the French Cultural Center in Sofia, Bulgaria. In 1979, he snatched the second prize in the International Sculpture Competition in Acapulco, Mexico. Other prestigious distinctions include money prize from the Bulgarian National Academy of Fine Art, 1987-1992, first prize in the contest Invention and Innovation Cyprus in the year 2000 permanent residency and certificate for outstanding achievement in art and culture from the United States administration, the year 2000. Another sphere where Riff Bulgari likes to work is documentary cinema. 
His career as an artist has been widely covered in the press, in newspapers, magazines and specialized editions, including Leading Bulgarian Daily 24 Hours, Who's Who in Bulgaria, 1998, Bulgarian National Academy of Fine Art, Special Edition of the British Royal Academy of Arts, Modern Bulgarian Art, The Sculptor, Stuttgart News, Playboy, High Life and others. His works are part of the permanent collections of the Bulgarian National Museum of Fine Art, of the Modern Art Museum Konepaya and Virtanen in Helsinki, of Paul Shea in Munich, of Mercedes-Benz in Stuttgart, of the Williamsburg Art and Historical Center Brooklyn, of Harada Ecology Center in Tokyo, of the Royal Academy of Arts in London. This painting's title is Jungle Factory. There are many things that I paint and then I go back to them for a while and with just one glance I realize what I wanted to say. Usually when an artist finishes a canvas, people ask him, what did you want to say? While I'm painting, I do not want to say anything in particular, but sooner or later, when I go back in time and look at things, I find a few explanations. The paradox with this painting is that it is a factory, which, though an invented one, is still a factory and looks very much like one. If a factory should be painted, well, you know, that factories are not something that people love to see, that is, factories are no worthy subject of art. Therefore, I have made a factory here that looks like an item taken from a child's play. It is cheerful and bright and is an interpretation based on the paradoxical comparison of children's toys with a factory polluting the environment. I have tried to marry two antipodes and thus create something intriguing and paradoxical as well. I am often asked, why don't you hang your paintings on the wall when have painted so many? Well, because they are good at the moment they were created. They may continue to be good later, but this will be up to people to judge. They are no longer interesting to me, and I do not want to go back to them. As a young artist, I have my creative periods. When one creative period is gone, I might go back to it for a moment, but I would hardly hang a painting from that time at home. Neither would I paint in the same way again. At the end of the day, man develops, and development is the drive to something new, better and more successful. So, I guess it is perfectly normal to feel this way. Добро, нещо по-успешно. Това мисля, че нормално по този начин аз да се чувствам. Bulgari's dynamic way of life is probably the precondition that makes each of his works a challenge for self-knowledge and for answering the question whether this eternal world is an illusion or cruel reality, 
And one more thing, should we have any confidence in the future?